Have you ever wondered what the life of an instrumentalist is like? Why they play what they play and what drives them? Oh, have you thought about why you love a particular song? Instrumentalists, they give us the best in music and yet we don't appreciate them as much as we ought to. And so, we bring you your favorite instrumentalists and everything that concerns them. Tighten your seatbelts, relax and enjoy as we take you on this wonderful journey of learning and exploration on the Behind the Music Show with your hosts Eza and Boots Devi. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are watching and what time that you are watching the show. Welcome to the Behind the Music Show. My name is Eza. Now, today on the interview, we have the Groove King. He calls himself, and I think rightly so. I think he's a master. He's excellent at what he does. And when you listen to him groove, he can't leave you seated. I present to you Anis Otim. <laughs> When it comes to playing the bass guitar, he is a maestro. Anis Hotin began playing the guitar as a young boy, and his love for excellence has seen him scale over heights. He has featured several artists and produced a number of albums. Besides the guitar, he is a producer, sound engineer, and founder of Band Ubunji. Hello, how are you doing? I'm okay, how are you? I'm good. Um, the last time we met, you were preparing for the Funky Christmas experience? Yeah. How was that? It was it was awesome. It was good. How did it go? How did people um, receive it? It was good. It was something new. Funky, playing funky music in church. It is not something common in Uganda. Mm. But yeah, they enjoyed it. We brought in the funk. Mm. Yeah, we enjoyed ourselves. Beautiful. Who is Ernest Otim? Ernest Otim uh, is a Ugandan jazz bassist. R&B bassist, funk, soul, yeah. Uh, that's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Plus also a producer on the other side. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, when did you start your musical journey? I think my musical journey began in childhood. Uh, as a young kid, my father taught me keyboard and guitar. Mm. Taught me, I think, like two keys. And I took it on from there. Yeah. So, uh, Lutz Devi was telling us a story. <laughs> uh, was telling us a story about um, what happened in school. Yeah. I want to hear that story from you. He <laughs> may have been lying. <laughs> the, the story, actually, at school, uh, Lutaya David, Lutz David, he was the keyboardist. Our whole, I was a classmate with him. He was the keyboardist for the school on all the school functions and everything. So, we were learning music from home. We had learned with my cousins and what. But at school, they would not allow us to touch the school organ. I think it was an organ or something. Mm -hmm. They would never allow us to touch. You, you press one. <laughs> so I'm sure he's, he's shocked. He, I'm sure he was shocked later in life to find that I'm doing music. Because I'm sure he didn't know mm -hmm. that I was into music that time. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, that shows me persistence. Yeah. And then the love for what you do. Like yeah. Someone else doesn't feel like, um, I think not so many people should be a part of this, but then you, you feel like, no, this is my thing. This is, I love it. And I'm going to go ahead and pursue it. Yeah. 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 yeah and I'm honored that right now we are celebrating what you're doing. Thank uh, you. Great. It's great contribution to the music industry. Okay. There's Book of, of gro Groovation. Yeah. Okay. Book of Groovation. And then L O V E. Yeah. Are those albums? Yeah, those are my albums. I I released three three jazz so called jazz albums mm. in my in my beginning years. Mm. Though I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh in Uganda bass the bass guitar people associate jazz music with the saxophone. Mm. So any other instrument someone doing jazz on any other instrument there is not much you can do and it's not it's not that it is bad but it's the it's the fact mm. so you have to look for other ways to make money <laughs> <laughs> so did you drop the whole idea of uh, jazz I'll albums I'll, I'll maybe repeat it later in future when maybe people are more receptive mm. so for now i just help other people i help other saxophonists i've played in very many songs, jazz songs, but of other people. Mm. Yeah. 
but not me being on the front line. What do you think we should do to help so that people appreciate it more? I, I believe we have to force I believe we have to force the music on the people. Uh, I'll go back in history. In in Uganda, when when I was young, Congolese music was everywhere. Every radio station, all every CD, every tape was Congolese music. For the three people, Bobby Wine, Chameleon, and Bebe Cole, to remove Congolese music, they had to force their music on us. Mm. They forced it, and they they were successful that they removed Congolese music that we now would hear Bobby Wine Chameleon and Bebe Cole. So I think also for jazz music, the local man, mm. the local man, uh, how would I put it? The local man actually is open. It is whatever he receives, he takes in. So like we have played, say, jazz music. You go and play jazz music in a village and they're like, Baku Babichi, Baveyo, Muveyo, Mutani Kakwe Imbadi. But after listening to the music, say for 30 minutes to an hour, they're like, wow, or your music, muene, muene. Mm -hmm. So it means the, the first impression was biased there. <laughs> but when they listen, when they take time to listen in, they actually realize this is beautiful music. So we, we have to, as an industry, force the music on the people. Mm -hmm. If they don't like it, then they, they don't like it. But most times you're, you're competing with music where people are forcing bubblegum music onto people and that's the music you're competing with so you also have to be forceful mm. yeah okay so to all instrumentalists out there simply because someone didn't like you the first time doesn't mean they're not going to like you at all yeah, yeah we're going to take this thing by force violently <laughs> uh, are there any major artists that you've worked with probably on their shows <laughs> I might have worked with half of Kampala. <laughs> What's up? Like I can't list everyone, mm. but I've worked with very many people, very many people. But the person I work with the most, my home band, is uh, Lillian Babazi and the Sundowners. Mm. That is my my home band. Give it up for Honest. Then please tell us about Band Urunji. Band Urunji. So Band Urunji is a band that I formed. I was a, uh, I'm a church guy. So I, I felt that, that the church was missing. I don't know. Not in a bad way. They were missing good music. Like when you're practicing for a secular artist concert you rehearse for a whole month the production is on point everything is clean well in the gospel side it is uh people come people join the choir that the lord sent me mm -hmm. but they don't put in skills so bandrunj was was a platform to have skillful music but still praising god but skillfully and enjoying ourselves and just giving back Praising God, it's like my ministry. Me giving back. say he's right when you listen to them you feel proud to be christian <laughs> and to listen to such beautiful beautiful music yeah, yeah because it's, it's not something that you really f it's that is very common in uganda yeah. so when we, if we can get such quality 
Thank you so much for embracing the idea. Welcome. And taking it on. We have noticed that most instrumentalists are born from churches and they come out to play. And while they're doing good outside of church, it's not the same in church. Uh, church seems a little bit mediocre. How can we help? How can we help with that? Uh, I think it's a mentality in the church leaders themselves. It starts from the leaders. Most of the people, most choirs, if you if you look at any choir, you'll find that most of the singers who are there, they don't have any skill. They, they don't know any anything musical they came there because they want to serve the lord which is good mm -hmm. but the bad side is at sa why don't you want to give good to the lord why they you find that they're actually skillful people in the church but they don't want to use them they're using the ones who about where but really the skill is not there so it hurts me when you go in the secular world and people are doing things skillfully and you come to church and those people in the secular world came from the church and they still come to church, not that they left the church. But when they're in church, they are, there's something missing. They they don't take things as serious. Well, like say in the secular world, if if I'm playing wrong stuff in rehearsal, I'll be fired. Mm -hmm. In church, you can't chase anyone, which is bad. It is good and bad. The good thing is you're having people who come there freely to serve the Lord, but the bad side is is it kills the quality, it kills the kills the vibrance the skillfulness of the music and me i feel music for god should also be beautiful in the bible it says play skillfully mm. play skillfully they didn't say just come and make noise so for churches to change i'm 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 actually happy that there are actually now very many skillful people playing in different churches mm. and the mentality should come right from the pastor if the pastor feels Ah, it's okay for anyone to join the choir and anyone to play an instrument will keep there. But things are changing, so I'm happy. Awesome. So hopefully uh, a few years down the road we'll notice a very big improvement Yeah. with uh, church music. Definitely. I can't wait for that time. <laughs> uh, so you call yourself the, fu the funk groove king. <laughs> they call me. They call you. <laughs> Why do you think so? Uh... <laughs> I think because I groove, I love to groove. I love to, and I love funk. In my beginning years, there's a man called Kaz Kasozi. He called me to join his band. He's one of the funkiest Ugandans. So from that, from that time on, I just love funk. Everything funky, yeah. So people, people at that time, they would think I'm his son or something. <laughs> So I took on the funk. I love the funk. Mm. Yeah, I love funk music. Okay. Um, what do you think sets you apart from the rest? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how to praise myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what What would you think is the unique quality? What is something that is you, th you feel this is unique about me? I would, I would think... Mm. Uh, whenever I'm doing something, I'm not doing it just for me. I'm doing it. How does it help the people I'm around? How does it help Uganda? How does it help the people who come after me in everything I do? I try to, at least those who know me, they know I'm, I have a good heart. I wish everyone good. I wish that the people I'm working with are learning, they are growing, they are doing something good. I don't like to be in a place where we are there's no growth where people feel they know and yet they are doing no sense mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's a uh, hard truth <laughs> <laughs> not so many of us would uh, find it easy to swallow it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the truth always helps us yeah it really does yes um Ernest is excellent in what he does like i said and uh, he does so many things and there's so much that we have to learn from him. There's so much that we can learn from him. Um, this brings me to the end of my interview. But in case there's anything that you want to learn about Anis Totem, please send, uh, leave a, a comment in the comment section. And maybe we'll have him again for an interview the next time. Thank you so much, Anis, for your time. Welcome. Thank you.